Good day, Grade Twelves. Welcome to this next lesson on electrochemistry. Um, if you couldn't join me yesterday, we did quite a bit, so I would really like to urge you to go and watch the video that um, we we did of the recording of the lesson we did yesterday, because today we're looking already at the applications of using the redox table and using the half reactions. So we started this example yesterday, but because we only got halfway through, I decided to go back to the beginning of it. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing, and then we're going to be moving through a whole bunch more examples, and then we're going to move on to some more interesting electrochemistry. So it says, for a zinc and gold oxide cell in the solution of potassium hydroxide, determine the oxidation and reduction half reactions. So that's the first thing we're going to do is determine the oxidation and reduction half reactions. So step one, we need to find the appropriate reactions on the table of standard electrode potentials. Okay, so what do we want? We want zinc because they gave us the full zinc, so we need zinc. And we need gold three oxides, so we need gold. And gold's formula is Au. Okay, so we go down, 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 we find zinc over here. Okay, and if we keep going down, 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 we find Au3 plus over there. Now, I know that this table is incredibly small for you guys, and I apologize about that. What I'd like to suggest you do is that, as I say all the time, you really should have your formula sheets and your redox tables and everything with you whenever you are doing science, whether you're watching a video on it um, or, in stu or studying it or whatever. So I would make, I would suggest that you make a plan to have your redox table, whether in the textbook or on your notes with you so that you can go through these examples with me. Okay, so it says find appropriate reactions on the table of the standard electrode potentials. Done. Okay, then it says step two. Determine the electrode potential for each of the metals. So do you see that the zinc's half cell, the zinc's half cell has an electrode potential of minus 0, 0,76, whereas silver's, I mean gold's has got, AU's half cell has got a positive 1,50. So what does that tell us? That tells us which one is going to be oxidized and which one's going to be reduced. I'm going to circle them again. So that there is zinc and o AU yeah, is done yeah. Okay, so we know that the zinc has more negative EMF. Therefore, gold is more easily reduced. Let's put it this way. It, since it's more positive, it is more likely to attract the electrons. So therefore, it is more likely to gain electrons. Because remember, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So, the reduction half reaction and the oxidation half reaction. So, let's think about this. We've just said that this is going to be the oxidation half reaction and this is going to be the reduction half reaction. And remember, guys, yesterday I gave you a clue. I said, if you can draw it you're using table 4B, everything that I teach you about the trick, tricks and things is using table 4B. Okay, there are two tables on your formula sheets for A and for B. I would suggest that you use table for B simply because um, it, this actually works for it. So we started with some zinc. Okay, there's our zinc. We added it to gold ions. There's some gold ions over there. So if you look at it, we went from zinc to zinc, two plus ions. Then we went down and then we went across. Okay, so what we're saying is that if you can draw a C with the reactions, then we know it's spontaneous and it works as an galvanic cell, a galvanic cell. So the oxidation reaction is the one that is losing electrons, so it's going to be zinc goes to zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons. And please, great tools, note that now your arrow is in one direction, okay? Whenever you're drawing them over here on the redox table, you see that the arrows go both ways, and that's because these reactions can go both ways. It can either be zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons goes to zinc, or the zinc breaks up into zinc 2 plus and gives off 2 electrons. But in this case, we know that zinc is being oxidized, so it loses some electrons, 2 electrons to form zinc 2 plus. At the same time, your Au3 plus is gaining three electrons to form gold. 
Okay, that's what's happening. We're getting gold out. So the AU is forming gold. Right, so let's carry on. Um, and I've said remember oil rig. Now step four is compare the number of electrons in each equation. So you can see that yeah, there are three electrons and here yeah, there are two. So do you agree that I could multiply the top line by two and you could multiply the bottom line by three and we'd end up with the same number of electrons, okay? This would be two AU three plus, plus three times two is six electrons plus two AU. This is three Zn plus three Zn two plus goes to six electrons. So then if you balance it, you get three Zn plus two AU three plus plus six electrons, but that cancels with that. So it goes to two AU plus three Zn two plus. Okay, right, so there we've balanced it. Now, it says a combined equation into one. Okay, so before we carry on, I just want to talk to you about writing this in the specific notation in the cell notation. So let's say, how would you write this in the cell notation? So I don't know if you remember, but the cell notation worked like this. It was the anode, then the anode's electrolyte, the salt bridge, the cathode electrolyte, and then the cathode, okay, in that order. So the only time it doesn't obey that order is when you have a hydrogen half cell, in which case the hydrogen half cell, no matter which way it's working, whether it's working as an anode or cathode, the hydrogen half cell is always on the left-hand side. Okay, always. So the way we would write this is, we said that we know that anox and a red cat are important in the section. So reduction occurs at the cathode and oxidation occurs at the anode. So this is the anode reaction and this is the cathode reaction, right? So therefore, what do we have? We've got zinc going to zinc 2 plus. So we've got zinc going to zinc 2 plus, salt bridge, and then we've got Au 3 plus going to Au. And now you don't have to write the coefficients that balance this reaction. Okay, have we finished this? No, we haven't, because what you always have to write, you always have to write one mole per decimeter cubed. You always have to tell them that this is happening at a concentration of one mole per decimeter cubed in order to ensure that you actually get out these E theta values. Okay, if, if you don't do that, that concentration and at the same standard temperature and pressure, you will not get out these specific EMFs. Okay, so now, new question. If silver is added to copper to sulfate, would it displace the copper? Okay, so if silver, and what is the equation for silver? Do you read silver is AG? Is added to a solution of copper 2. We want copper 2 sulfate. Would it displace the copper? So first things first is we do what? We look for half reactions. So we need silver, which I saw just now. There it is, silver. And then we want copper 2 plus. And that's important because there are quite a few coppers on this reaction thing. If you look at it, and I'm going to write them out here so you can see them. This one goes Cu2 plus plus an electron goes to Cu plus. Then this one over here is Cu2 plus plus two electrons goes to Cu. Then there's this one here, which is Cu plus plus an electron goes to Cu. So you can see the three possible reactions that we need to use. But they have said they want to go from copper to sulfate to copper. We actually want to go from copper to sulfate to copper. So we want this one. So the reaction we're looking for is that one. Okay, so now, what did I tell you? Yes, we could do the calculations and everything else, but there's a quick, easy way to work this out. We were told that we started with what? We were told you were started with silver, okay? And you were told that you also started with copper 2 plus. So in other words, for this reaction to occur, you would have to go from copper 2 plus to copper, okay? 
but then you'd have to go from to silver to silver plus. And what did I say? I said that it has to form a C. Okay, it has to form a C. And that is not a C, it is a backward C. And therefore the correct answer is no, it will not. Okay, do you understand that? It definitely will not. Okay. The other way of looking at it is they're going from silver is added to copper solution. So that means we're going from AG goes to AG plus plus an electron. Copper two plus solution is Cu2 plus plus two electrons goes to copper. It, the point is that if this copper two plus ions are above it, okay, let me do it another way. Okay, that is the one reaction, okay? Okay, so the whole point is that if you cannot draw it as a C, then it is not going to work and it's going to be non-spontaneous. Okay, it's going to be non-spontaneous. So if you cannot draw it like a C, going from chromium to chromium to... So in other words, in order for this to work, we would have had to be given copper and try and get out silver plus ions. Okay, let's look at another example. In this case, we're looking at... Let's do a highlight of things, see if that works. Zinc is added to solution of magnesium sulfate. Will zinc displace the magnesium from the solution? So we're starting with zinc. Okay, so let's go find ourselves some zinc. There's some zinc over there. Oopsie, there's some zinc. And we're going to solution of magnesium sulfate. So it's going to be Mg2+. So there's the magnesium 2+. So if you think about it again, what are we getting? Sorry, let's go into pen. We need to start at the zinc. Okay, this is where we're starting is the zinc. It's added to a solution of magnesium 2 plus. Okay, will the zinc make us get magnesium? So how would this work? This would go from here to here. Then we'd have to go up and then we'd have to go across. Does that work? No, it doesn't because we said our shape had to be a C. So therefore we can say immediately that that does not work for us. And therefore this is not right. Okay, another way to think of it this way is that do you agree that on the redox table, as you go down, this is the increasing oxidizing ability. Okay, and as you go up the table, it's an increasing, reducing ability. So what does that mean? If it's an increasing oxidizing ability, it's being reduced. So therefore we're saying that zinc has got to go to zinc 2 plus, sorry, reduced. Okay, if it's reduced, it's going to lose electrons. Okay, so the point is that if we had this is increasing oxidizing ability. So if it's an increasing oxidizing ability, um, then do you agree that you're going to end up with this being the reducing aid being reduced and this being oxidized? For magnesium to be oxidized, it's magnesium sulfate to be oxidized, it has to lose electrons. Okay, that's what we're saying. In other words, in order for this react for this to work, okay, this bit here at the top is supposed to be oxidized. Okay, so in other words, it's supposed to be losing electrons, not gaining them. Yeah, magnesium 2 plus is gaining two electrons to form magnesium. So the only way this reaction works is if it was going from magnesium to magnesium 2 plus and from zinc 2 plus to zinc, not the other way around. Okay, now it says if aluminium is added to solution of cobalt sol sulfate, will the aluminium displace the cobalt? Okay, so let's try this one. Let's go. Oh, I don't like that at all. Let's do this. So we want aluminium. So we need aluminium and the letters for aluminium are AL. So let's go find some AL for us. So let's go look. Um, barium, calcium, sodium, aluminium. There we go. So there's our aluminium. It's added to solution of cobalt sulfate. So it's going to be cobalt is CO and it's CO2. So now we need to find some cobalt. Hmm, they're right at the bottom. 
No, but that's CO3. We want cobalt coming out entirely. Okay, let's have a look. There is some cobalt coming out entirely. Okay, do you see what's wrong with this one? This one is CO3 plus plus an electron gives you CO2, and they've asked us to form cobalt. So we can't be going around forming cobalt ions. We want pure cobalt. Okay, so if that's the case, if we look at this, we've been given aluminium, okay, and we are going from cobalt ions to cobalt. So we're going from given aluminium, going from cobalt ions to cobalt. Yes, it works, it forms a beautiful C. Except grade 12, you can't say it forms a beautiful C in the exams. You need to explain. So what you need to say is that the aluminium ion, okay, the half reaction for the aluminium, the aluminium, what is it, three plus, yeah, plus three electrons goes to aluminium, has an E EMF of negative one comma six six, and the CO two plus plus two electrons goes to CO, has an E theta of minus naught comma two eight, Therefore, we could say that, therefore, this is slightly more positive, so it's more likely to be reduced. Oxidation reduction, yeah. Because if it's more positive, it's going to gain the electrons, okay? So if it's reduced, then it's gaining electrons. So that works, which means this is more likely to lose electrons. So the reaction is going to be aluminium, goes to aluminium 3+. plus plus three electrons and similarly cobalt two plus plus two electrons goes to cobalt and then yeah okay and then you can balance it etc but they haven't asked us to do that okay so do you understand how this works in fact let's just show you how this would work because i think it's important that you do be able to do the half reactions so the next thing step that we would do is that we'd have to balance the number of electrons so in order to do that just like with maths you times the top by two and the bottom by three because what are we doing we're balancing the electrons so this becomes two two and six and this becomes three six and three so it becomes two aluminium plus three CO2 plus goes to two aluminium three plus plus three CO. There you go. So there you go, CO. Hmm. And that's a little, uh, just a second. Let me just fix some because at the moment that's just common carbon monoxide, CO and CO. There you go. So that's your balanced half reaction. I mean, balanced overall net reaction. Okay, now, now we need to talk about the EMF of the cell. We've already been kind of using the EMF of the different half reactions to decide which side is going to be oxidized and which side is going to be reduced. Now let's talk about the actual EMF of the cell. It's a definition of the EMF. We've actually mentioned it before when we were doing electric circuits. The EMF is the maximum amount of voltage that a cell can provide a circuit, right? Similarly, the EMF of the cell is defined as the maximum potential difference between two electrodes or half cells in a galvanic cell. And why do they say it's the maximum? Well, because it's a minute you put the two electrodes in contact with each other in a circuit, the minute you close that, Okay, it starts re giving off electrons, which means the EMF is immediately going to start decreasing. So therefore, the EMF is the maximum potential difference that can occur between two electrodes before, before um, we actually connect it. Now, it's very important to be able to calculate the EMF of the electric chemical cell. Guys, think about it this way. Every battery you've ever used in your entire life actually has a voltage on it, okay? It's either 1.5 volt or 3 volt or 2 point whatever volt or 12 volt battery, etc. And that's actually the EMF. So the way that they get these different battery sizes or amount of voltages, there are two ways. One is that they can make, like a car battery is actually made up of six cells. Okay, each given of two volts, which gives you a, a battery of 12 volts. Because a battery, officially, a battery is two or more cells connected. Okay, a cell being one galvanic cell. Okay, so now 
as you guys know, um, and as I've mentioned before, it totally depends on what is in your cells, so how many volts given off, okay? So if I want a really high powered battery, I'm going to choose um, something like lithium at the top here and fluoride at the bottom to give me a potential voltage of six volts. Okay, almost six volts. Whereas if I choose something like, I don't know, iron over here and copper over here, do you see that that gives me, what is that? That is minus 0.04 and that's about 0.2 volts, which is ridiculous. But if you only want 0.2 volts to run something with a very small battery, then you need that. So that is why it's important to be able to calculate the EMF. So there are three different reactions that are all on your formula sheet and they are very important. In fact, I think they've only reduced, they've reduced it now to only having two of these equations and I think it's the bottom two. Yeah, it is. It's oxidizing agent minus a reducing agent and the cathode. No, they give you all three. Yay, they give you all three. Okay, so you will notice that E theta, and I call this E theta, a lot of teachers call it E zero, or they call it the EMF, but it's E theta of the cell is going to be the E theta, or the EMF of the reduction half reaction, minus the EMF of the oxidation half reaction, or it can be the EMF of the oxidizing agent minus the EMF of the reducing agent, or it could be the EMF of the cathode minus the EMF of the anode. Guys, these are all the same thing. It just depends on which way you look at them. And the reason why it's cool that they put this on your exam papers, because sometimes students forget about red cat and anox. Okay, they forget about anox and they forget about red cat. So they forget that the cathode is where reduction occurs and they forget that an anode is where oxidation occurs. I mean, I can understand it. If you're tired, it's been a long exam period and science, chemistry is one of your last papers, it might be difficult to remember everything that you've studied unless you've been studying for a long time and revised a lot. So it can happen that you can forget that. And that's fine because on the formula sheet, they've got that the EMF of the reduction half reaction minus the EMF of the oxidation half reaction is the same as the EMF of the cathode minus the EMF of the anode. Okay, and just to really make it easy for you, that is exactly the same as the oxidizing agent minus reducing agent. So there you go. They've actually given quite a lot of information on the formula sheets, and that's sweet of them. So for a zinc cell, zinc copper cell, okay, if we go look for zinc copper, okay, there's your zinc. Okay, and your copper, which is going to be Cu2 plus plus 2, goes to, so there it is. Okay, so the value here is minus 0, 0,76, and the value here is 0, 0,34. So if you're using table 4B, it is always the bottom minus the top, always the bottom minus the top. Okay, if you're not, then you need to know that it's the cathode minus the anode, the oxidizing agent minus the reducing agent, the reduction half reaction minus the oxidation half reaction. Okay, you also know that this is going to be the reduction half reaction because it's lower than this one over here. So therefore, we can say that this is 0 0.34 minus minus 0 0.76, which is 1.10 volts. And what does that mean? That means that this reaction is spontaneous because if this is bigger than zero, then this is a spontaneous reaction, EOUS, spontaneous reaction, but we'll sp speak about spontaneity later on. Okay, so let's talk about standard EMF. The standard EMF is called E0, and the E0 of the cell is the EMF of the galvanic cell operating under standard conditions. So that's zero donate standard conditions, and the standard conditions are the temperature has to be 297 Kelvin, the pressure is one atmosphere, and the concentration is one mole per decimeter cube. Now let's think about this. Remember we are talking about rates of reaction the other day, rates of reaction, and we spoke also about chemical equilibria, and we said that there were a couple of things that affected this. Okay, first of all, rates of reaction, temperature, do you agree? What else? Pressure, or concentration, or both depending. Then there's rates of reaction would be a catalyst, surface area. Okay. Yeah, chemical equilibrium is obviously temperature. 
Okay, what else? The pressure. Or the concentration. Okay, and those are really it. Temperature, pressure, concentration. Yeah. I mean, you can also, yeah, like you can know this fine. So, do you see that these things here affect the rates of the reaction and also the chemical equilibrium? And that is why these things have to be kept constant in order to get the E theta. If you want these values, yeah, minus 3.04 for this against, and remember this is with respect to the hydrogen um, electrode, then in order to get that, these must be constant. And grade 12, they love actually asking that. It's a very nice exam paper question. They'll say, Johnny did the experiment where he was looking for, to try to find out the voltage of the copper zinc battery. And he found it to be 0.89 when it's supposed to be, for example, 1.04. What could he be doing wrong? And it could be that his temperature is not correct, that the concentration of the electrolytes are not one mole per decimeter cubed, that the pressure is not one atmosphere. So those are three of the things that could be wrong for dear old Johnny. Okay, so now, typical exam question, it says, calculate the cell potential of the electrochemical cell in which the following reaction takes place and represent the cell using standard notation. Okay, so we're going from magnesium to magnesium 2 plus. So let's go magnesium to magnesium 2 plus. And we're going from hydrogen plus to hydrogen. So we're going hydrogen plus to hydrogen. Okay, so now we need to write it from the way it should go. So it's going to go from magnesium across, then it's going to go down, and then to across. Okay, so first of all, they say calculate the cell potential of the electrochemical cell. So do you agree that E theta is always E cathode minus E theta anode, which equals E theta? Uh, what was it? Cathode reduction minus E theta oxidation. Okay. Or well, remember what I said to you if you're using table 4B, which is this is it's going to be the bottom minus top. But let me just prove to you that this is the reduction. Do you agree that its cell size is zero? And this E theta is minus 2,37. So which one is bigger? Okay, I mean more positive. Do you agree this one's more positive? Therefore, this one's going to be more likely to attract electrons. And if you go oil reg, reduction is gain. So therefore, this one is going to be the reduction half reaction. And this is going to be the oxidation half reaction. So therefore, E theta reduction minus Thing is going to be 0 minus minus 2,37, which is 2,37 volts. Okay, so there we go. We've worked out the cell potential. Now they say they want us to represent the cell using standard notation. Okay, so remember the standard notation goes what? It goes anode, anode electrolyte, cath salt bridge, cathode electrolyte, cathode. Okay, remember this? goes, let me check something, okay, it goes, um, okay, anode, anode electrolyte, then salt bread, cathode electrolyte, cathode, Okay, so the anode in this case, remember, is where oxidation occurs. So this is the oxidation reaction, this is the reduction half reaction. So this is the anode and this is the cathode. And we start with the magnesium, so it's going to be magnesium, which is a solid, going to magnesium 2+, plus, which is aqueous, salt bridge, then it goes hydrogen plus, so it's going to be H plus, dash, and you can put it two if you really want to, but then it becomes H2. And then the hydrogen two plus, you don't have, you can say it's aqueous, and this is a gas. Okay, and then you need to write one mole per decimeter cubed and one 
mole per decimeter cube to show that you did it at standard conditions. Okay. Right, now let's do this question. It says, given the following two half reactions, so we've got Fe3 plus, plus electron gives you Fe2 plus. Okay, so let's find that one. There's Fe3 plus plus three electrons gives you Fe. That's Fe2 plus plus two electrons gives you Fe. Huh, here we go. Fe3 plus plus an electron gives you Fe2 plus. That's the one. That's this one, yeah. Okay. Then if we look for the other one, it's MnO4 minus, MnO4 minus, there it goes, plus 8 hydrogen, so it's this one here. Okay, that's that one. Okay, it says give the standard electric potential for each half, half reaction. So this one's standard potential, E theta, is going to be plus 0.77 volts, whereas this one's E theta is going to be plus 1,52 volts. Okay, so there we go, done that. Now it says which reaction does, takes place at the cathode and which reaction takes place at the anode. Okay, well what did we say? We said that if this reaction is going to happen, then the one that's more positive is going to be reduced. So this is the reduction half reaction. And if this is a reduction half reaction, it is the cathode, whereas this is the oxidation half reaction, and therefore it is the anode. Okay, now it says represent the chem electrochemical cell using standard notation. The cathode and anode reactions take place in inner plate. Okay, fine. Okay, right, now, so what do we want? We need to make sure we're going the right way with this. So do you agree that if this reaction were to occur, we'd go be going from Fe2 plus through to Fe3 plus, then we'd go down, 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 down this way, and then across like this, okay? So therefore, do you agree that our reactions are going Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus? And then what are we going? We're going MnO4 minus goes to Mn2 plus. Okay, that's what's happening. You don't have to worry about the hydrogen. Okay, you don't have to worry about the electrons and you don't have to worry about the water. That's what's happening. Okay, and then you go one mole per decimeter cubed. And then you go one mole per decimeter cubed. Cubed. Okay. Okay, so we've done that. Now it says calculate the EMF of the cell. Remember that E theta of the cell is what? It's E theta of the cathode minus E theta of the anode, which equals E theta of the oxidation. Remember red cat? Oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Sorry. Reduction half reaction. Okay, so that's reduction, half reaction, minus E theta, oxidation. Okay, so what did we say? We said that anode was 0.77, but the cathode was 1.52. So that's 1,52 minus 0.77, which equals what? Let's get out our calculators and work that out. So 1.52 minus 0.77 equals three quarters. So that's 0.75 volts. So therefore the EMF of the cell is 0.75 volts. Hmm, that's actually a very nice question. Okay, grade 12, how are we doing? Okay, let's move on. So now we're going to talk about spontaneity. We've kind of mentioned it already. We kind of spoke about the fact that you needed to look at your EMF, okay, and the difference between them. So if the EMF of the cell, we're not talking about the half reactions, of the cell is positive, then the reaction is spontaneous. In other words, if we want E theta of the cell, which equals E theta of the cathode minus E theta of the anode, or E theta reduction half reaction minus E theta oxidation half reaction. If that is greater than zero, then the reaction is spontaneous. If, however, that 
is smaller than zero, then the reaction is non-spontaneous. So another example is it says, will zinc react with dilute hydrochloric acid, HCl? So let's go find zinc. Okay, so here's zinc. Now we want dilute hydrochloric acid. Dilute hydrochloric acid. And I just need to see if I can find it on here. Um, okay. So if you want hydrochloric acid, do you agree that it breaks up into hydrogen plus ions and Cl minus ions? Okay, so do you agree that you'll actually be reacting it with hydrogen plus ions, okay? And the hydrogen plus ions are over here. So what are we saying? We're saying if the wool of zinc reacted dilute hydrochloric acid, I just want to check if there's no other version of this, otherwise I'll be using this one. Okay, iodine, oxygen, iron, no, 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 chlorine gas, no, 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 okay, sad. Okay, so you can see that this reacts with the hydrogen plus ions because you can write it like this. You can actually write it as a C. But otherwise, do you agree that your E theta is going to be zero, the cathode, minus the zinc, minus 0,76, which is going to be zero plus 0,76, which equals 0,76 volts. So will zinc react to dilute hydrochloric acid? Yes, it definitely will. Okay, so now you can show how reactions are spontaneous or not. Okay, right, now let's talk about applications of electrochemistry. So the first application is the main use is to make electrical batteries. And we've spoken about this quite exhaustively, the fact that you can have different batteries used for different things. So for example, torches, and you know, guys know this, this is either going to be your pen light battery or your big batteries with the torches and everything else, okay? So that is often what batteries are used for. Also used for electrical appliances such as cell phones, iPads, and appliances is probably the wrong word. Probably gadgets would be a better word. Gadgets or tools, okay? And you know, you guys know that this, the, the battery that goes into a cell phone is totally different from a battery that goes into a torch. 90% of the time, the batteries that go into the torch are round or cylindrical in shape. And what's important is that 90% of the time they are non-rechargeable. Okay, then do not, cannot recharge. Whereas, we know for a fact that if our cell phones get start getting flat, what do we do? We plug them into the wall and we recharge them. Same as with the iPads. So there are two totally different types of batteries being used for the torches and the cell phones. Digital cameras, similarly. Digital cameras, 90% of the time as well, they have batteries that are a little bit different in nature, but they are rechargeable. Hearing aids have got teeny, teeny, teeny batteries because the hearing aids are teeny, teeny, teeny in size. Okay, so before we carry on with electroplating, electroplating is the first real use of your electrolysis. So before we carry on with this, I'm actually going to say this love and leave it for today. And we will start again on Monday and we will get all the different, um, we'll talk about all the different um, uses of electrolysis and electroplating and then talk about the different ways that we can get our copper refining, etc, etc, etc. Have a wonderful weekend.